we had this moat around our Amazon listing. If we got suspended or something happened, we ran out of stock, we decrease in organic rank. What we do is we pull all the levers and get them going again. When you build a real brand, you don't have to worry about the Amazon algorithm and Chinese competitors coming into your space. Ladles and Jelly Springs boys and girls, welcome back to the 10 K Collective podcast for six, seven, and eight figure e-commerce and Amazon sellers. We're talking today to Travis Ziegler. He is many, many things, an optometrist with a PhD. He's set up his own businesses and sold them for huge amounts of money. Um, just a huge overachiever. <laughs> Can't even begin to summarize. That. I don't have time. So we are going to talk today about how to create a perpetual sales machine for Amazon selling. Sounds very cool. Welcome back to the show festival. Thanks, Michael. Glad to be here again. Yeah. Good to talk to you as well. Now, my mind was a bit blown by the amount of stuff that you've achieved in your life, but let's just say that you have in your last business, my butchered summary is that you had over 200,000 social media followers and you created an amazing amount of goodwill and brand in the eye care space, if that's the right word. And kind of as a side note, ended up selling a ton of products on Amazon. Obviously use the usual Amazon levers, Amazon ads, good listings, but that is much bigger than just being a great Amazon seller. So today we're going to try and uh, capture, you know, the structures that you've created to do that. So. What, what is your perpetual sales machine anyway? Can you summarize it for us a little bit? The perpetual sales machine is just pretty much creating this cog outside of Amazon, creating a, a real brand. I know it's a novel concept, but creating this real brand with real followers, focusing on real people and solving problems for them. What most Amazon sellers are doing today is they're doing product research that everybody else is doing through different tools like Helium 10, Jungle Scout, Zang Guru, and they're finding opportunities. They're not true entrepreneurs. They're opportunity seekers. And there will be an opportunity. They will find a piece of plastic from China to sell, and they'll sell a lot of them for 12 months, but then the competition moves in and they have trouble. Well, that's because you found an opportunity and so did everybody else. Whereas in when you build a real brand that actually serves a person and solves a problem, then that's what really matters. That's what makes the difference in people's lives. That is entrepreneurship. And if you're a true entrepreneur, you need to solve problems and you need to fix problems. That's all entrepreneurship is. And then what happens is when you solve those problems and you build up this audience, you then flood Amazon with this traffic externally. External traffic's been all the rage lately. But you, when you flood all this traffic externally to Amazon, you increase your organic rank and you can dominate on Amazon. And you don't even have to try that hard because the audience wants to support you and your competitors will be like, why can't I overtake this guy? It's because we built up an audience of 200,000 people. We had this moat around our Amazon listing. If we got suspended or something happened, we ran out of stock, we decrease in organic rank. And then what we do is we pull all the levers and get them going again by emailing our audience. Hey, we're back in stock. Here's a 20% off coupon. Pull some Google ads. Then of course, Amazon PPC, our email list, our YouTube channel, Facebook group, everything flooding Amazon and that product would shoot right back up in the organic rank. So it's when you build a real brand, you don't have to worry about the Amazon algorithm and Chinese competitors coming into your space. Dream for many people, isn't it? Not not having to worry about competitors or even, as you said, if you got suspended, if you've got an email list of people. If you can find an alternative sales channel, you know, I guess in the end, you can still keep business going, even if the sales rates might not be quite what Amazon offers. Okay. So I've got a, a five parts of this and not to steal your thunder, to make sure that we, we give a nice, clean, simple take away sort of memorable thing for people blog posts traffic from google email capture re-engagement be interesting to find out what that is and then repeating the process so tell me about this this overall process i've even got a little the graphic here which we'll put over at the show notes at 10kcollective.com so how does this system work what are the pieces of it how do they flow into each other yeah so the first thing we always do is we focus on the blog post the blog post is more of an advertorial and it's around a problem that your product solves not about your product, not about anything else, your problem that it solves. So I always give the example of eyelid wipes because that's what I sold. Eyelid wipes were eyelid wipes. You wipe your eyelids with them. What's the problem that they solve? Dry eye, blepharitis, styes, things like that. So we would write an article, and this example will stick with the word sty, around how to get rid of a sty in two easy steps. We talk about what a sty is, what causes a sty. Here's the two simple steps to get rid of your sty. Number one, you have to heat it up. Number two, you have to clean it up. So the heat was a warm compress. You take this warm compress, you put it in the microwave, you put it over your closed eyelids, and then you just gently massage the sty. Don't pop it, just massage it. Number two, make sure it stays clean. Styes are caused from bacteria, so you need to use this eyelid wipe to clean up your eyelid. And then what we'd do is we'd take those articles and they'd have Amazon attribution links. They had Amazon associate links. That's how long I've been doing this. But we didn't have attribution links, which is great because Amazon gives you that 10% kickback, which is fantastic. We've actually, side, sidebar, we've had... We've had ads 
where our Amazon bonus, the attribution link paying us 10% back is more than the Google ad spent. And so we are getting paid to run these. And some that's not always, it's like maybe like 5%, but it does happen and we try to scale them and it just keeps going up. So, but anyway, so we have this blog post around how to get rid of a sty and we talk about it, give the value, solve the problem. And then our products naturally solve those problems. So they click over to Amazon to buy through an attribution link. And that's how we track it. Google ad spend and then the attribution link and the sales on that. And we just look at that at tracking. Now, how do we get people to the... Go ahead. No, I was just going to clarify a simple point, um, which is you're writing in an advertorial style, i.e. you're focusing on the problem and then you just organically link very naturally to the solutions or they're part of the solutions. That's where the solution as a whole is your IK regime, right? And the products are just part of that and you just link to them, right? But then exactly. the way you get the visibility for that isn't relying on SEO you're using Google ads to run traffic to the advertorial, but not direct the Amazon listing. Is that correct? Yes. So then we add Google ads to this. Google ads, again, around the problem. So big difference here is most people focus every, all the keywords that are out there, mostly focus that we advertise for are mostly focused around product-based keywords. A product-based keyword in this situation would be eyelid wipes. So if I were to go from Google directly to Amazon for eyelid wipes, I'd be paying a dollar to $2 per click. However, when I focus on the problem that my product solves, Sty, I can send it from Google to this blog post for seven cent clicks. We were getting 11,000 clicks a week at five to seven cents a click to this blog post. And then on that blog post, they go over to buy on Amazon. So this does a couple things. It gets people on our blog, obviously, for very, very cheap. Everybody would love to pay five cents a click, seven cents a click. So then we can retarget them, retargeting ads. We'll get into that maybe a little later. We can then put a pop-up in front of them with an opt-in form to get their email address. And you want to invoke curiosity. We can jump into that a little bit more later. And then they're on the blog, the advertorial, and then it sends external traffic to Amazon. And Amazon, as we know, loves external traffic. And the reason they love it is because you're referring them customers. And they're not just getting the sale from the eyelid wipes. They're then getting Prime. They're going to upsell them to Prime. They're then going to upsell them to Prime Video, which is now like $3 a month. If you don't want to watch advertising, they're going to, they know that Prime versus non-Prime is like $3,000 a year versus $300 a year. Amazon knows all that. So they're going to reward you and your listing for sending that external traffic. So the more external traffic you, you, you send, the better Amazon's going to rank you. And even though that conversion rate will be lower, Amazon doesn't care about that. So that's kind of like, if you just focus on that, Google ads to blog post to Amazon, that's like all you need to do. You don't have to do anything else. And if you just kept focusing on that and found more and more problems that your product solves and just came out with more and more of those blog posts, that is essentially a sales machine, but it isn't the perpetual sales machine. Like there's more to it, but if you want to simplify it, that is like the main thing that you can do. Does that make sense? It, it totally makes sense. I'm loving it. I, I, fact, I like it's so elegant because the psychology of people who sell stuff is they focus on their products because the problem I want to solve is I've got to shift these eyelid wipes. I've got 10,000 of them in a warehouse. And so I put the eye, word eyelid wipe out there and everyone else is doing the same. So it's expensive. But where the consumers are is I sty, sty problem, sty itching. How do I solve my sty problem? And so what you're doing is meeting the consumers where they're at, but most of the other advertisers are not thinking that way. So it's so much like less competitive. It's super elegant. I love it. Beautiful thinking. Uh, I don't wake up with a big bump on my eyelid and say, man, I need some eyelid wipes. I think, oh my gosh, what is this big bump on my eyelid? Yeah, what is a bump? Why? Yeah. All that sort of uh, higher level sort of questions that you might have more sort of, um, was with top of funnel traffic that I guess that can get more complicated. So we won't do that because we're about it simplifying here. But however, if we want to simplify, we want to complicate a bit. You mentioned retargeting and you mentioned opt-ins. That's already added some complications. So why should we bother? Given that you're Mr. 8020, why should we even bother about adding this complication? What's the upside of it? People get distracted. So we have this blog and the best thing you can do with this blog is uh, a retargeting ad. Not the best thing, sorry. The best thing is email opt-in, but we're going to go retargeting first. Retargeting is the easiest thing you can do. So think about like you're researching on your phone, you're standing in line at the grocery store, you're get, right, waiting for your kids or something's happening and you're just kind of on on your phone looking up something. You find an article, you start reading it, you get distracted, you put your phone away and you forget about it. However, later that night, you pull out your phone, you're scrolling through Facebook and you see the exact article that you were reading earlier and you're like, oh yeah, I was reading about that. So in this situation, Sty, we have this how to get rid of a Sty article. We have somebody that's already landed on it. So we've pixeled them. And now what we're going to do is retarget them. So you can retarget with Meta, Facebook. You can retarget with Google. And we're going to retarget them right back to the blog. So they have already been reading about how to get rid of a sty because we know that because they've been on this blog. 
And this is, of course, changed with all the changes in iOS and everything, and it will change even more moving forward, but there's always way to, ways to retarget. So ignore the fact that you've probably heard pixelations aren't as good as they used to be. They're still great. They still work. And what we do is we just target it back from Meta, from Google, back to that blog. Small amount, $5 a day, not much. And then when they're scrolling Facebook and they see how to get rid of a stike and they're like, oh yeah, I was reading about that earlier today or yesterday or two days ago. And they click on it again and get back on the article. And usually this is a time with a retargeting ad that they are maybe more settled. Maybe they're at home later at that night or something. And so then they read the whole article in full and then they click the links and buy. You can also take those retargeting ads and target directly to Amazon. So another source of external traffic, because if they're on a how to get rid of a sty earlier, article earlier, and then they see the eyelid wipe that they read about earlier on Facebook, they'll then click right to Amazon to buy. So then we're sending people back to our blog. We're now sending people direct to Amazon, more external traffic, more traffic. And when you create this simple Google to blog post to Amazon, now Facebook to Amazon and Facebook back to blog posts, you're then getting people in your ecosystem more and more and more, and you're sending more external traffic to Amazon, which is going to boost you up in the organic rank. To take it a step further, we'll then have a pop-up, and that pop-up will invoke curiosity or evoke whatever you want to say. And with that, what we do is we say, usually we, we like to focus on negativity, unfortunately, on the, the pop-ups. And so it will be like the three mistakes you're making that are causing your styes. Or the three, th uh, yeah, that's my best one. I can come up with the styes. But the three mistakes you're making with styes. And you have this nasty bump on your eyelid that's painful. You're like, what are the three mistakes I'm making? We're going to say not cleaning off your makeup and not cleaning your eyelids well enough and three different things. So they opt in for that. You send them an email about those three mistakes they're making. And guess what? That is an advertorial as well. It's an advertorial around the three mistakes you're making. We had an eye makeup remover. So not removing your makeup at night. Here's an eye makeup remover. Number two, not keeping your eyelids clean. Make sure after you wash your face, you use an eyelid wipe. Here's an eyelid wipe. Number three, you're not using a warm compress enough. Here's the reason why you need to use a warm compress for keeping styes away. Again, another advertorial. And so now we have Google ads to a blog to Amazon. We have Meta or Facebook or Google retargeting these back to the blog and retargeting these back to Amazon. Now we have email opt-ins. So we're building our list and that's going to an advertorial about our products. That's going to go to Amazon and back to another blog around that. And so now we have the perpetual sales machine. We're building our audience, which is the key part of the perpetual sales machine part. You can build the sales machine, but if you want to keep it in perpetuity, in foreverness, you have to build an audience because now we have an audience and we create, create this drip sequence. And this drip sequence just keeps going into that problem that they're trying to solve. And it will be the three mistakes that you're making, how to treat it, the best thing I use to prevent styes. And we just keep going into it over and over again, agitating the problem. You can do this for dry eyes. You can do this for blepharitis. You can do this for all the problems that your product solves. And as you build up that audience, sales continue to increase. And then we take that email list and we'll get them on other platforms. We'll get them on YouTube. We'll get them on LinkedIn. We'll get them on Facebook. We'll get them on TikTok. Whatever you want to get them on to follow you. And then they follow you elsewhere. And as people start to see you over and over again on different platforms, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, email list, over here on this podcast, like they start to trust you more regardless of what field you're in. And so as they see you more and more, they're going to buy from you more and more. And as you start making more money, you start dumping more money into the perpetual sales machine. And so what you do is you figure out like, I'm going to 10% of my sales is going to go right back into this every month. And as your sales increase, the amount of ad spend that you have is increases as well. And it keeps increasing as you go. So a completely separate example. I want to just take this into another space. We did this for the agency as well. So our agency, we created blog posts around the problem that our product solves, which is Amazon PPC. We drove Google ads to it. We retargeted it with Facebook and all the opt-ins go into a free Amazon PPC masterclass. And you can see that at ProfitablePineapple.com. And in that free Amazon PPC masterclass, they're all essentially advertorials for my agency because you're seeing me as an expert. You're seeing me on YouTube. You're seeing me in my community. You're seeing me on Facebook. You're seeing me in your email inbox. You see me on these blogs and you see me in all these different areas. And so when you think like, I need to hire an agency, we're the first person you think of. Also in that free Amazon PPC masterclass is information on our software to get you to sign up for our software. And all we do, it's Google ads to a blog post, YouTube to a blog post, meta to a blog post, email list to a blog post. And instead of going to Amazon, it's going to our software, Profitable Pineapple Express or 
apply to work with us in our agency. And it creates this perpetual sales machine for our agency leads over and over again, constantly. And we were at one time getting 10 signups a day for our software. However, they weren't sticking. They weren't putting their credit cards in. So we're still working through that. But now we're getting one sign up a day with their credit card in, which is huge. This is recurring revenue. This is MRR, monthly recurring revenue. So it can work in any field that you're in. doesn't matter if you're an Amazon seller, software seller. I did it for my practice locally around like my practice area. And so it's the perpetual sales machine because you just never, I, you're always in front of the person you're trying to serve. And people make fun of me because I send out five emails a week. You don't have to do that. You can send out one email a week, but if you're on my list, you're going to get five emails a week because I always want to be top of mind. And if you're sick of it, unsubscribe. I'm okay with that. But yeah, that that's how you build this. It's, it's that easy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work, but I, as you say, the, if this is you, we've given the 80 20, so this is the bonus stuff. I guess the, you know, email is still an amazing channel for follow up, right? Is the classic follow up channel. And, and everyone's saying things like, oh, email's dead, but I check email daily. And that's not because I love it, it's because everything ends up getting channeled through that, you know, somehow. I mean, yes, sometimes you can live without it. But yeah, it's um, great to have that. What I think you've given us as an integrated strategic way of using these tools together in an intelligent way, not any individual hack, which is beautiful. That's proper business thinking right there. One question that comes out of everything you said, which is just um, without going down a rabbit hole, you said you could retarget people to the blog post. You could retarget people that are going direct to Amazon. How do you decide which to do? We do both. So we test small and go big. So you can't, you can't individualize, like if we retarget them back to the blog post, then you can't necessarily like track that specifically because it's going back to the blog post that you're keeping track of the Google ads from. So what we do is we'll just add that as a line item to our expense, Google ads, but you can track from Facebook ads directly to Amazon. And so usually what we'll do is we'll just dedicate $5 to the Facebook ad retargeting. And then if we see a positive return, we'll add even more. And then we'll then do another $5 a day on the Facebook ad directly to the product. And that $5 a day, we can scale because it's being tracked separately than the one that's going back. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So in other words, you accept the fact that some stuff you can't exactly ascribe to attribution in digital marketing is a nightmare. Well, any marketing, but in, because you kind of can in digital marketing, sometimes people get wrapped up in this. So you just avoid that getting in the head trash. $5, retarget the blog post and move on with your life. $5 a day, direct to the product page. But because you can track that by directly attribution, you can scale that like crazy if it works. Is that right? Exactly. Yep. Perfect. Nice, clean, pure business thinking here. I love it. This is great stuff. Uh, you mentioned already a couple of things where you offer some free training. So let's quickly tell people about how to find out about your services and, and free products. So um, the Profitable Pineapple Express and the Ad Agency. Yeah, so we have our free Amazon PPC masterclass at ProfitablePineapple.com. It's better than any paid course that's out there. And then we also have our $1 30-day trial at the time of this recording for ProfitablePineappleExpress.com. Most people need to get inventory out of spreadsheets. Inventory management software will take you from inventory taking you two to 10 hours to 40 hours a week down to maybe five minutes, 10 minutes. And so that's the importance of software. I know a lot of sellers continue to do that. And as an entrepreneur, your time is more valuable than bringing in all the data that a software can do for $100 a month. It's crazy to think that I can't, like there, there's not more people that are just jumping on inventory management software. If you use ours, great, or use somebody else's. Just get it out of your spreadsheets. And that's at ProfitablePineappleExpress.com. And then, like I said, the free Amazon PPC Masterclass. And if you want to work with us, that's at ProfitablePineapple.com. Brilliant. Well, look, I know you've got another call to jump on. Um, very impressive stuff. I really like the clarity of business models and the way that you've stripped things down to what works. And yet you've created sophisticated systems. It's a beautiful combination. Love it. This is something I'm going to go back over and think about. Um, I'd urge any listeners to do the same. Just remains for me to say, Dr. Travis Ziegler from Profitable pineapple and profitable pineapple express thank you so so much for coming on the show thanks michael hey i want to thank you for watching this video and i picked out another video just for you so make sure you check out that other video and what do they need to do do they need to like and subscribe yeah. like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. <laughs> what do you think <laughs> <laughs>